In this video, I'm going to be giving you a build for the Snow, the Vanguard, the tankiest ship in the game that's meant to take a beating and is actually great to take into fights that you would otherwise lose in because of the amount of damage that's dished out. And the ship in question is the Snow Ship. This is classified as a tank ship that is designed to basically survive damage. Like its perk is tenacity, recovers brace strength by 4% per second while bracing, which means that you can brace for longer essentially. And it also increases your brace strength by 50% and your brace strength recovery by 150%. So it means you literally can take hits over and over and over again. It's not a problem. Just as a quick comparison, you can see here the brace strength of the snow is 25,000 compared to the brigantine that is only 8,000. So it's it's a massive difference. It also comes with a bit more HP. That's 10,000 more hell health, but it has a slower speed than the brigantine. The brigantine is still the fastest ship. The snow is pretty much average in the terms of speeds that most of the like end game ships can go. It reaches a trimming speed of 13, but it even sails quite good against wind. So expect something between like, you know, 11 and 13 for the most part. So it's not terrible. It also has a massive cargo. It has five slots for weapons, but it only has four furniture slots compared to the Brigantine, which has five. So it's very hard to get the snow to be a rank 11 ship without having very, very good weapons. Now, before we talk about the weapons and the armors and everything on the ship that I'm using, which you should know that, you know, any weapon is viable for any system or, you know, play style that you want to adapt. This ship has a big focus on taking damage. So it doesn't really matter of what kind of damage you choose to dish out. You can be long range, you can be close range, but I will show you what I choose to use. Now you can see here we have trimmed sails. We're sailing into the wind and we're sailing 12 knots. That's pretty decent. 12 knots into the wind is very nice. Sailing with the wind, you can see here we have 13 knots and sometimes certain waves will allow you to go 14. I have seen 14, I swear, I promise. But 13 seems like the most consistent thing. So expect the ship to go 12 and 13 knots most of the time. It also has a good stamina. Like you can see the stamina hardly moves down compared to the Brigantine, which moves down. It, it feels like double the pace. This one, you hardly ever have to actually eat stamina food. I mean, like it's pretty good. You're also going to want to keep a lot of stamina for your bracing. Your bracing is this key, the shield icon on the right side of your screen. And that's when you hold a spacebar for me and you use brace to brace against attacks that come in and if you brace an attack successfully you take zero damage from it but you can see this is this uses your stamina now the ship has a cargo hold almost double that of the brigantine so it's great for carrying a ton of stuff but it's you know still slow so if you're doing things like you know running to all the different factories to collect all of your pieces of eight it's better to use the brigantine as i mentioned in the brigantine build video but if you want to do orders or like really hard events that have enemies that, you know, are very, very strong and you're worried about, you know, dying or sinking because, you know, you you have your like repair kit on cooldown all the time and you're taking damage and you're scared and you're going to die, which has happened to me a few too many times. So I'd recommend this ship for any time you're looking for a nice fight, a fight that might be stacked against you, like four rogue ships fighting you. This ship is perfect to take on a ton of enemies. It's great. Now, before we go any further, there are some settings I want you to enable that make the game a whole lot better. And that's in your settings, in your interface screen over here. In the first option, customize user interface, click this and you'll see behavior icon and status effects icons. I highly recommend turning this on. Behavior icon lets you know that if an enemy is, you know, in process of attacking you, is about to attack you, it lets you know, like, you know, like what their combat status is versus you. I don't know why this isn't on by default. It felt a little bit weird. And status effect icons like when you put flooding or fire on enemy ships, it lets you track like, you know, how much more of that like effect do you have to apply until they're on fire and they take damage from fire over time for the next couple of seconds. It just makes a lot of sense to have these on. So turn those on or don't. I don't know. It's up to you. So if we go ahead and we manage the ship, of course, we're using the Vanguard snow ship. Let's start out with the weapons that I am choosing to use. Like I said, you can use any weapons that you so desire. I do have torpedoes on the front. I really like having torpedoes in the front. You can, however, put bombards on the front as well. They're pretty good. The reason why I like the torpedo ones is because they put flooding damage and I like doing a lot of flooding damage because it's like, you know, damages the enemy over time and it works pretty well. 
And torpedoes are kind of fun to shoot. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty cool. On the left hand side, we have flooding demi cannons at 98 power. They're really, really strong. Great for putting flooding on enemies. I even have the same thing on the right hand side. Now you'll notice in my Brigantine uh, video, I had a long gun on the one side and a flooding demi cannon on the other. You can adopt the same option for this or you can adopt whatever you want. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's really up to you and how you wanna do. I am going full on into flooding with this. So flooding demi cannons on left and right. At the back, I have the bombard. So as I'm sailing away from fights, I can use the bombard to, you know, take a few cheesy shots and, you know, get some damage in. Or if I'm taking like an awkward turn, you just turn to the back of the ship and you shoot a couple of these off. They deal decent damage, so it's pretty good. And for the auxiliary, I opted to use the rocket instead of the mortar. The mortar is great from long range, but when you're right next to an enemy, it's very, very hard to use the mortar like accurately because you can't really shoot it near you. It has to be like quite a distance. The rocket, however, you can fight or like shoot near you and it's actually a lot stronger in terms of the damage it deals. And this one in particular sets the ships on fire. So I actually have this thing to set fire to enemies, which literally can set them on fire so often that it's happened so many times. And it's kind of fun to use. It's great to aim at close range. It's like almost impossible to aim at long range because you can't see where you're aiming. I wish it had like a higher tilted camera so you can look down at it, but maybe they add that in an update. But the rocket is pretty great at, you know, like setting ships on fire and letting them take fire damage as well as flooding damage with my, you know, demi cannons. For the armor, I have the Royal Custodian armor. If you want to see how to get this armor, there is a video linked in the description that says how to get this. It's pretty easy, should take you, you know, like like one or two tries. It's basically a co-op event, one of the blue co-op events that you do, and you can have a really high chance of getting this as a drop. You can see I already have three of them. For the furniture, You'll see my first furniture slot is the major one. This increases damage by 15% after a crew attack for 30 seconds. We have the fire muskets attack on this one. So it actually just works out really nicely to, you know, just shoot your guns, dealing a nice portion of damage on the enemy ship and then getting like a 15% damage increase for the next 30 seconds. For the second furniture slot, we have increased damage from auxiliary weapons by 10%. So our rockets do 10% more damage, very nice. Our third one is increase elemental damage multiplier of rocket by 19%, which means that we can set ships ablaze, you know, into fire a lot quicker because the rocket is our only fire weapon on the ship. This is going to allow us to set them on fire with like one good timed or placed, uh, you know, rocket attack and the enemy ship should be ablaze. And for the fourth furniture slot, I have increased charge rate of crew attack by 10%. Of course, these you can change as you desire. If you want to focus more on other types of damage, you can. You'll see mine is very focused on crew attacks as well as, you know, doing fire damage with my rockets. Because I already know that I'm going to do good flooding with the torpedoes and the demi cannons. I don't have to boost those. Now, when you're in combat with this ship, the best way to do it is, you know, start out with your torpedoes, as many as you can, until you get in range with your rockets. Once you're in range with your rockets, you're gonna wanna try aim your rockets ahead of where the target's moving, because the rockets are a little bit slower to like track, so aim in front of the enemy to hit a specific target. If you can hit the weak points of the enemy ship, you'll set them ablaze so much quicker, and it's, you know, it just, it just feels right when it works. And whenever there are ships on your left and your right, you have to use the demi cannons and just, you know, aim for the weak points too, but generally try hit them with the whole spread of the ammo. And you should set them, you know, on flooding quite easily so that they start taking damage over time from flooding. And if any time a ship is behind you, swap to your bombard and just do that. The nice thing about the rockets in this case is that the rockets can apply to any direction where you are. Whereas on the Brigantine, when you're in a close combat thing, you're only using like one side of your ship and you can't really use the mortar properly. In this case, with the snow, we can use the rockets on a ship that's directly next to us and we can use the flooding demi cannons on the right hand side. And if you want to min max, you can like try aim the front and the back or the, the, you know, the back and the front, like from that little, you know, guided line. And you'll see in a lot of these combat instances, this ship actually is very, very durable. Just make sure you make use of your bracing command as much as you can for like damage, like from torpedoes or things that like, you know, bombards or mortars, anything that's hitting you. If you can hold down that space bar at the second it hits you, you can negate the damage you take completely and, and it keeps you alive a lot longer. So it's a great way to tank your way through things and still have very, very good damage output. You can see in some of the clips, I was straight up taking out ships in like my first few runs with them. It's like, bam, first ship gone, second ship half HP. It's like, it's great. 
So if you are looking for something a bit more sturdy, I suggest you have a look at the snow. I mean, it's pretty damn nice. I like using it for those sticky situations that are a little bit too difficult, and it works every time so far. So I would recommend it for that. If you have any of your own personal builds for the snow ship, leave them in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.